Coming up, we actually have an audio recording of a local self-defense seminar. Todd, do we have that clip? Okay, here it is. Okay, okay, everybody settle down. First rule of self-defense. If they have a gun, you are dead. Okay, this isn't some magic course where I can teach you how to dodge bullets. In real life, if someone pulls a gun on you, you fucking do whatever they ask, okay? You suck their fucking dick or you finger blast them until they're satisfied because, brother, you just lost all your human rights, okay? They own you now. You are their slave for as long as they own a gun. And let me tell you something. If some dude has a mask and is holding a gun, fucking get in their car, shut your fucking mouth, and get ready to die because that motherfucker has a gun. A gun will kill you. It is a gun. You can't just break his gun. He would shoot you. He would shoot you and you'd be dead. He could decide to shoot you at any time. You should be terrified at every possible moment that he could end your fucking life. You should be on your knees, begging him not to blow your fucking brains out. You should be saying, hey, my mom, she's rich, let's go over to her house and rob it, you know? I got the key. And maybe he says, okay, yeah, sounds like a plan. You both go over there and you go in through the front door and you start to think, oh, jeez, I don't think mom's home, but I shouldn't be breaking into a house. And then he presses his fucking gun into your back, reminding you that he could make you a paraplegic if he gets a fucking twitch in his fucking finger. And you go into the house and you're pretty sure that Mara ain't home. She should be over at Robert's house by now. Oh, I bet Robert loves that. I bet Robert loves when Ma comes to his fucking condo at sundown so he can fucking defile her, defile the memory of her as your mother. And you start thinking about all the gross, psychosexual love games that they're going to be playing with each other when all of a sudden you hear footsteps. And they ain't your own. And they ain't the gunman's. And all of a sudden, Ma is at the stairs. God, she's beautiful. She sees you through the shadows. Jeremy, is that you? She says. Yeah, Ma, I thought you'd be over at Robert's by now. Oh, Robert can be so boring at times. And just like that, a hot bolt of lightning flashes down your spine and you don't know why. She starts to walk down the stairs, gripping the banister with her long, delicate fingers. Well, to be honest, Jeremy, I've been wanting to say this for a long time, but I think you're very attractive. A flash of a thousand terrible thoughts sprint across your brain. Can I do this? Can I be a man who fucks his own mother? Can I marry her? What would Robert think? Then, a familiar voice opens up from behind me. I wouldn't mind. The man holding the gun takes off his mask. It's Robert, the dirty fuckhound. In fact, this was my idea. Of course, you think. Robert convinced Ma to have a threesome with a mostly willing son. Well, not today, you think. Robert, you fucking pitiful bastard. I'll fucking kill you before I fuck you. I don't want to fuck my mom and her boyfriend. I just want to fuck my mom. They're both coming at you now with open mouths and unzipped flies and you freak. You freak. You're so full of confusion and rage and sexual panic that you just look and grab at Robert's hands. You try to get the gun away from him so that you can just run away and be free of this terrible night forever. But Robert, he doesn't give up so easily. And now you're both jockeying for the gun. And no matter how much you pull, you just can't get the gun loose. So you bite down on Robert's hands, you know, to try and loosen the grip on the gun. And all of a sudden... goes off. The gun. The gun that killed Ma. Knives are also bad. It's just about sundown and the following is a mandatory government order. Go to bed. <laughs>